It's time for your Low Country Real Estate Market Update. It's the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Brian is one of the top 1% real estate agents in Charleston. Find him online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-345-1273. Now, broadcasting from the WTMA studios, here's your host, Brian Beatty. Good morning, Charleston. Thanks for tuning in to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. So glad to have you with me this morning as we talk about real estate here in the Charleston area. If this is your first time tuning into the program, let me tell you what you're in store for over the next hour. This is a program that talks about residential real estate. I'm a real estate agent when I'm not on this program. Uh, I run a team that sells almost 200 homes a year here in the Charleston area. We've sold about 1,000 in the Charleston market. And so I take my experiences as somebody that's an active real estate agent And I share those experiences with you to help educate you on this market. I also take national, regional, and local data to help give you some expectations as to whether you're buying or selling or investing a home in a home. You know what to expect. You know what the market's doing. And you can use some real factual data to paint your picture of what this market looks like. So this morning, we're going to talk about quite a few things, but we're going to talk first and foremost about the market. We're going to talk about you know, are we in a shifting market? Are things starting to slow down? We're going to talk about a few different areas within Charleston, and we're going to talk about, you know, things like new listings and closings and the sales price. How affordable are homes now versus a year ago? We're going to cover all those topics. We're going to talk about Berkeley, Dorchester, and Charleston County and their specific stats. We're going to talk about some mistakes that you can avoid when you're house hunting for a new home, given those stats and given your understanding of the market. We're going to talk about how to sell a home and buy another, some pros and cons with regard to maybe you buy a home first and then you sell yours, or maybe you choose to sell your home first and then buy another, which is what most people do. But we're going to walk through that. We're going to talk about the pros and cons, the steps associated with protecting yourself so that you don't own two homes at once accidentally, or you don't become homeless accidentally. And then lastly, we're going to talk about real estate taxes. Some of you, I'm sure, have already gotten your property tax bill for the year. I know I've gotten mine for my property and investment properties. So I want to walk you through understanding your bill, how to apply for some exemptions to save you money on property taxes. And if you don't agree with the appraised value of your property, which is what the amount you pay in taxes is based off of, I'm going to tell you how to save some money there. So that's what we have planned for the next hour. Now, if you'd like to reach out to me, if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, as I mentioned, I do have a team that uh, we sell 200 homes or so a year, uh, close to $80 million worth of real estate every year. We'd love the opportunity to work with you. Feel free to call me off air. My cell phone number is 843-345-1273. Again, that's 843-345-1273. Or go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. A lot of good stuff on there. Information about myself, my team, who we are, what we do to sell properties. You can listen to versions of this show. I've been doing this for over five years now. So I think I have over 100 shows on that website uh, for you to draw from. Good good resource for information. And of course, if you want to know more about the value of your home, I do have a free home value calculator on there. Just go to the contact tab and uh, it will take you to a link where you can fill in information about your property or you can just give me a call. I'm happy to walk you through what I believe your home is worth either now or a few months from now so that we can plan on helping you sell your home. So without any further ado, let's talk about the market. Every every market is unique within Charleston. You know, we are blessed to live in an area where we have historic properties, waterfront properties, beachfront properties, uh, downtown urban lofts. We've got traditional neighborhoods. We have equestrian properties. We have all types of different properties it greatly skews the numbers. So that's the caveat that you guys need to understand when I'm reading through these numbers is that every market is unique. I was I met with somebody earlier this week. We looked at the differences in the market in Mount Pleasant between three hundred and fifty dollars and $400,000 and six hundred and $700,000. And and it's actually quite different, the two different markets. One is very much so a seller's market, the lower price range. One is really returning to normalcy. There are some Uh, factors there that are contributing toward that market slowing down a little bit. So you need to understand that every market is a little different. And there are plenty of buyers out there that, frankly, are just being priced 
out of this market. We're going to talk about the affordability index, which we don't cover too often on this program, but I'm going to help you understand what that means. So the national sentiment right now has kind of given rise to the notion that housing markets are are stalling. In fact, uh, Lawrence Young, who's the chief economist over at the National Association of Realtors, says that our market is stalling nationally in many areas. Again, take that with a grain of salt, but there are some areas and pockets, not just nationally, regionally, but locally, that are starting to slow down. The rate by which properties are increasing is starting to slow down. Maybe there's more properties going on the market than there are homes being sold. It's taking longer to sell. You're no longer able to sell your home for 2% more than what your neighbor sold for a month ago. There's a bunch of factors that play into this. So if you're curious about your own specific market, let's analyze that. Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the trends within your market and let's determine what we believe to be a reasonable expectation as to what you can sell your home for and how long it will take to sell. Um, you know, last year at this time, the national storyline was, you know, about how high demand was, you know, propping up sales, pushing prices higher, and inventory was decreasing. It was affecting the month's supply of inventory in Charleston. And that is still the case. Overall, our market is still in a position where prices are going up, demand is increasing, while inventory decreases. So overall, it's still an awesome market if you're going to sell your home. If you're a buyer, yeah, you've got some challenges. It's it's tough. If there's a home priced well in good condition, it's being marketed well, especially in some of these parks, it's like you know, three fifty dollars to $400,000 in Mount Pleasant. You're looking at a week or two before that property's gone. I, you know, I looked at the 200 or so homes that we've sold over the past 12 months. And on the listings, about a third of our listings sold in about a week. Another third sold in about a month. The other third took 30 to, you know, obviously you're going to always have outliers. You know, we, I have a $5 million island <laughs> that I now have under contract. I found a buyer for that took nine months. Obviously that's going to take longer. It's going to skew the stats, but overall the market is still very much so a seller driven market. So let's talk just a little bit about some of these different categories that we analyze, you know, listings, sales, closings, days on market, so on and so forth. If you look at new listings, this time last year, and I'm reading September stats, by the way, obviously we don't have October stats yet, but in September of last year, we had 1,859 new properties hit the market. Last month, we only had 1,650. That's a reduction of 11%. That is the lowest month we have had in at least a year of new listings hitting the market. And if I look at closings, which obviously was impacted by, you know, the hurricane we had. But if you look at September of last year, you know, we had about a little over 1,600 closings, September of 2016. Last month, we had a little over 1,400. That was down 13%. That was also the worst month we've had in over a year for closings. So let me, let me just tell you a little bit about, you know, inventory and month supply of inventory. And then let's talk about the affordability index. If you look at the total number of homes that were available for sale, in the Charleston Tri County area, September of 2016, we had a little over, we had 6,359 homes available for sale. Last month, we had 5,267. That's down 17%, just in terms of the number of homes available for sale at any given point in time. That's the biggest drop in inventory that we have had in over 12 months. Now, when I talk about month's supply of inventory, let me just explain what that is so you guys know what I'm talking about because some of what I'm saying to you know, folks that haven't listened to my program before, I might be talking gibberish to you. So month's supply of inventory is the inventory of homes for sale at any given point in time divided by the average number of homes that go under contract for a given month. So when we measure the health of a real estate market, we use month's supply of inventory. It's a good um, denominator to determine supply and demand. So if I look at September of last year, we had 4.3 months worth of inventory. Last month, we had 3.4. Last month marked the lowest month supply of inventory we've had in over a year. It was also the biggest reduction in inventory we have had month over month. So, you know, what that means is demand is increasing relative to supply. I mean, if I look at this by property type, 
single family homes from you know September of last year to this year, the month supply of inventory is down 17%. The month supply of inventory for condos is down 28% from last year, which is what's fueling the increase in median sales price. But it can only go up so quickly, so fast, and for so long. So when I look at housing affordability, let me help explain to you what that means. We use an index to determine the affordability of real estate. And so this index measures housing affordability for a particular region. For example, if an index of 120, if you have an index of 120, that means the median household income is 120% of what's necessary to qualify for median priced home in that area. So the higher the housing affordability index number, the more affordable homes are. Now, last year in September, we had an affordability index of 125. Last month, we had 110. That was also the biggest drop we've had, almost the biggest drop we've had in over a year. What that means is that homes are 12% less affordable this year than they were the same time last year, given the tracked median sales price and median household income. So when we talk about issues with first time home buyers and the fact that they're being priced out of the market it's be, they're literally being priced out of the market they can't afford to buy a house now when we look at the median sales price across the board the median sales price is up 4.2% year to date from the same amount of time last year which is great i mean the median sales price in the Charleston tri county area right now is 400 or i'm sorry $250,000 again that's up a little over 4% But again, when we look at month's supply of inventory, here's the really interesting thing is, you know, again, we are, we are year to date, we are at 3.4 months worth of inventory, meaning if nothing else listed based on all these average numbers in three and a half months, we would be sold out of inventory. That's what I mean when I say we're in a seller's market, a normal balanced market where there's no real upward or downward pressure on pricing. There's no oversupply or undersupply of demand supply. It's just a normal market with typical appreciation, three, 4% a year. That's six to eight months. We're at 3.4. Now, if you look at some of these different markets within a particular area, again, going back to Mount Pleasant, 350 to $400,000 south of the IOP connector, you know, toward downtown Charleston, we're at like 1.8 months worth of inventory. That's why homes are selling so fast. There's hardly anything available. We're actually purchasing more homes faster than we're putting new listings on the market. That's why that month's supply of inventory continues to go down. We're continuing to eat up that inventory, which is why sellers, if you're listening, you know, I talked last week about is now the right time to sell your house? It depends on your market. If you go to, you know, six hundred dollars to $700,000 in Mount Pleasant, north of the IOP connector, you're pretty much in a balanced market. I think the month's supply of inventory is around seven months, meaning it's not the same dynamics if you're going to sell your home in that market versus something you know five miles down the road. So let me just very quickly go through the different counties here. I'm only going to read the single family detached stats, uh, but I always like to break this down. I know some of the people that listen really appreciate this. So Berkeley County, uh, and I'm I'm reading year-to-date stats, you know, for 2017 versus the same amount of time in 2016. New listings were up 10%. Closings were up 5%. The median sales price, 4.6%. Homes are taking the same amount of time to sell. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the days on market and sold property sell is at 43 days in Berkeley County. Last year, it was 53 days. And you're getting about 98% of your asking price. In Dorchester County, we've really not seen any change in the number of new listings or closings. New listings are up 0.4%. Closings are up 0.7%. But the median sales price, interestingly, is up 7%. You're going to get about 97.5% of your asking price, and it's going to sell in about 45 days, which is down 17% from last year. And then Charleston County, here's some interesting stats. New listings are only up 1.2%. And again, that's the year-to-date average. Last month was not a good month for new listings, nor was it for closings. Closings are actually down half a percent, but the median sales price is up six and a half percent. On average, we're getting 96% of our asking price and they're selling in 59 days, which is one day more than last year at 58 days. 
So that's what's happening in the specific counties within the Tri-County area. If you want to know what your home is worth, you want stats specific to your home, I offer a free service, no cost, no obligation. I will give you an annual review of the value of your property, and each month I will send you indicators that impact the value of your property. Is it going up? Is it going down? Based on the things that I just read. So if you'd like that kind of information, again, free of charge, no obligation, happy to provide that to you just as a service so you know what's going on with your property, I can be reached at 843-345-1273. Again, that's 843-345-1273. Or please go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Stick around, Charleston. A lot more stuff to get to. Very excited about it. A lot of good info. So stick around. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Visit Brian Beatty's website at listingsincharleston.com. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues next on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. WTMA. Now, here's more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, Charleston. Thanks again for tuning in to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. As we continue our discussion about real estate here on this program, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, You know, I always appreciate those of you that uh, reach out to me, whether it's to help you buy, sell, or invest in real estate, or really just to call and say, you know, hey, I've got a specific question, or do you know a good, you know, general contractor. I'm thinking about doing some renovations to my house. I'm here to be a resource for you guys. I'm here to help. So it doesn't just have to be, hey, I need to sell my house now. Call me. Don't get me wrong. I love those phone calls, but I'm here to be a resource of information for you. So if I can help you in any way, shape or form in something real estate related, housing related, please feel free to give me a call. My number is 843-345-1273. That is my cell. It's not the number to this program. We'll talk privately. 843 843- 345-1273. Call or text that number or visit my website, listingsincharleston.com. You can search the MLS, learn more about what we do to market our properties for sale and, and the you know effects that we have based on our marketing. We're selling homes in 38 days and for 98% of our asking price on average, uh, which is much better than the market average. So uh, happy to talk with you about helping you sell your home. We'd love that opportunity. But let me give you some information now on some mistakes to avoid when you're searching for a new home. And this is a continuation from um, a segment I did last weekend. I just, I ran out of time. There were other things I wanted to talk about. I got a little long-winded and who knows, it'll probably happen again this weekend. You know, I get on a roll and I start talking and I, I, I as you can probably tell, I'm passionate about what I talk about. I love what I do. <laughs> and I'm, I'm frankly, I'm very passionate about education and in giving you the right tools and information to be successful in real estate. And I know a lot of real estate agents listen to this program too. So thank you for that. You know, we talked last weekend about, you know, the, the dangers of looking for a property to purchase and in potentially making an offer on something without a mortgage pre-approval, which is a huge mistake. It essentially just says to the seller that you're not interested or you're not ready, or there's something that they're going to read between the lines. So don't do that. I also talked about the dangers of house hunting without a real estate agent and how sellers or listing agents can take advantage of you by asking uh, some clever questions to unveil your motivation or your interest, which could ultimately harm you in the course of negotiations. But we also mentioned the fact that, you know, real estate agents, you know, like me that are doing 200 deals a year, we have a massive database of people that will be buying and will be selling anywhere from next week to next year to five years down the road. So if you want to sell your house, it makes sense to communicate with somebody like me because I might already have a buyer for you. And if you want to buy something, same thing, I might already have a seller for you. So a uh, little tip there, but let's, let's kind of switch gears a little bit and, and, and just go back into this list. I think there's, there's a big issue with just not knowing what you want. It's really important to make a wish list before you start shopping because looking at extremely different types of properties is just going to slow down the process for you. You know, I had a client who was interested in a, you know, kind of a one of a kind property as well as, so he wanted this very unique property within a cookie cutter development And it was extremely challenging to find what he was looking for. So it necessitates a conversation with your agent to say, how likely is going, how likely is it going to be that I can find what I want? Is something like that out there? And then to take that a step further, is my perception as a buyer in terms of what I'm willing to pay for that property consistent with what that market is saying? You know, if you want a deep water property, 
in Mount Pleasant for $750,000. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Those don't exist right now. I don't know of any trailers on deep water, which would be the only way to do something like that. Um, th- so we just need to go through your list. We need to separate your needs and your wants. And a really good real estate agent is going to not just go into the MLS and send you some properties, but they have that database. They're going to mine that database to find those properties. My team takes it a step further. And once we learn what our buyer wants, we go into the marketplace and using all the technology and resources I pay for and have access to, I can target market specific sellers that have properties with your generalized criteria that are not on the market for sale. And I call them and I say, I have a buyer that's very interested in purchasing a property in your area with your specifics. Have you considered selling your home? And we have matched up dozens of buyers and sellers by doing that tactic. That to me is going above and beyond. But in order to do that for my clients, I have to know what they want. People search real estate in one of two ways. They either search real estate by a process of selection or a process of elimination. Here's what I mean by that. You're either going to know what you want and then it's your agent's job to provide you with the best opportunity possible to buy your dream home. We know what you want. We know what you're after. Now it's our job to go in the marketplace and find it. So that's the buyer number one. Buyer number two doesn't quite know what they want. So from their perspective, it's easier to determine what they don't want. Again, process of selection versus process of elimination. They need to see a bunch of real estate to determine, okay, I know I don't want that or I know I don't want that area. Either way is fine. I need you to understand that, especially for the people that have never lived here. Maybe this is their first home. It's okay to get out there and start researching different areas. And and the reason that's okay is because, first of all, FOMO, fear of missing out. You don't know what you don't know yet. You don't know what you like because you haven't been exposed to what you like and what you don't like. It's our job, of course, as real estate agents to uncover what is most important to you so that we can give you the best chance possible of buying that, which takes me to another point, which is just waiting too long to see a house. I mean, in this tight market, if your real estate agent calls you about a new listing, do whatever you can to see that right away. And that's really what a good real estate agent should be doing for you when you're working with a buyer agent is they need to be calling you and saying, hey, did you see 123 Main Street that I emailed you at 7.30 this morning? What does your calendar look like today? It looks like it's a really good one and I want to get in there as soon as possible. But that's not the way most real estate agents work. It's very reactive in our industry. What what most agents typically do, I'm, I'm a big believer in doing the opposite of this, but Most agents say, okay, tell me what you want. How many bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, locations, other important features to you, amenities, price range. And then I'm going to set up a search for you in the MLS, which only real estate agents have access to. And then as soon as a new property hits the market that fits your criteria, that system is going to email you. If you see something you like, let me know. I'll show it to you. And that's about it. (laughs) That's about where their effort stops. And by the way, setting up an MLS search when you've done... tens of thousands of them like I have, takes you five minutes. And people wonder why, you know, did that agent really do everything that they could have done to earn a 3% commission? My agent just made $10,000 and they did basically nothing except help me negotiate a contract. So you go above and beyond and you demonstrate your value by doing just that, going above and beyond saying, hey, I know what you want so long as you've told me what you want. Now I'm going to go find it. And when I find it, I'm going to let you know about it because chances are we're not the only person interested. That's what an aggressive agent does for you. An aggressive is not pushy. Aggressive means they're on it. They're doing their job. They're they're walking the walk, so to speak, okay? I'm gonna give you another little tip here. And this, I might get into a little bit of trouble with this, but uh, dang it, it's the truth. And that is inviting outspoken and uneducated advisors with you on your real estate search. I mean, really, is your mom going to live in your house? What about your best friend? Right, yeah, I didn't think so. (laughs) So even though it's wise to get an unbiased second opinion, just beware that the desire to get too many opinions can cloud your judgment. You need to know what you want. You need to trust your real estate agent to make the right decision with you, not for you, with you. You know, often these folks are just offering observations based on their own living situation, which might not apply to you. Obviously, your mom's going to want the very best for you, but 
Maybe your mom doesn't realize that, hey, I'm looking at what I can afford, mom. Yeah, I'd love to have, you know, the upgraded kitchen with Thermidor appliances, but I'm looking in 300, I'm looking for a $300,000 house. I'm not looking for a home that has 30 grand worth of appliances in it. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, if you will. Uh, Another thing that I'd like to mention is just, you know, expecting perfection. We have to understand in this market, for the most part, we are in a seller's market. So if you're hoping to find that perfect size house in the perfect neighborhood with the perfect floor plan, with the bells and whistles at the perfect price, I mean, that's, that's a tough thing to do. Very, very, very rarely do we work with people that say, oh, on a scale from one to 10, this is an 11. It has everything that I want and more. Obviously, it's our job to try and find that. But in a seller's market where prices are going up, inventory is low, demand is high, if you wait to find the perfect, 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 perfect dream house, you might be waiting quite a while. That's one of the things that stink about a seller's market. It's just there's just not as many options. And when you find it, you're probably not the only one that's interested in that property. Another little tip I'll give you uh, is just ignoring the neighborhood. So many people focus on bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, features, features, features. They forget about the neighborhood. When When you're touring a home, make sure you save some time to look at your neighborhood. You know, are there neighborhood kids playing Metallica in their garage, (laughs) you know, with the garage door open, you know, is there a bunch of trash in the street? Are there cars with engines being rebuilt in the front lawn? Um, Is it Pleasantville? And you don't want that. You don't want a super strict HOA. You want to do what you want to do in your own house. It's different for different people. So, I mean, you know, do cars speed down the street or is it a safe area? Last thing you want to do is select a beautiful home in a nightmare neighborhood. I'm not saying I've owned a home that was, I, I, I purchased a home that, tur- that we turned into a beautiful home through extensive renovations a while back. And the neighborhood overall was okay, I guess. But one of the questions that I should have asked was, you know, what are the neighbors like? I lived next to one guy and my God, his dogs barked all day and all night long. We had this beautiful backyard Uh, The previous owner was a landscape architect and it was just gorgeous. You wanted to spend time in the backyard. Too bad the the dogs were barking the whole time. I mean, it was a challenge. And we were by far the youngest people in our neighborhood in that section of the neighborhood. Most of the people we live next to were retired. You know, they already bought their most expensive home and that were content living there. It was funny. My wife's parents, when they would come to stay with us, they would get greeted by the neighbors saying, oh yeah, you know, how you doing? They'd make friends. They didn't even look at us. In fact, side story here, it's just kind of funny. And then I'll take a break, but we had a garage sale at our old house and, uh, you know, we've got all this stuff out and I helped my wife set it up. I went to go do an open house and one of our neighbors walked up. She lived right next door. She walked up to us and she said, why is your dad selling his lawnmower? (laughs) My wife's, you know, 26 years old at the time. And she was so taken aback. She was just like, uh, because he doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> I said, okay, all right, well, if I buy it and it doesn't work, I'm going to come back and talk to him. It was just hilarious, you know, the, the, the perception of some of the neighbors. But the whole point in saying that little story is just don't ignore the neighborhood. You have to be happy, not just with your home, but where you live. If your neighborhood, if your surroundings and your relationships with your neighbors are important to you, make that part of your home search. I implore you to do that, okay? When we come back, we're going to talk about understanding your property tax bill. Okay, they just came out. Let's walk through that. Let's help you better understand what that bill looks like and how you can test the value and how you can save money through some exemptions. Exemptions. So stick around. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Again, if you want to reach out to me, 843-345-1273 is my cell, 345-1273, or go to listingsincharleston.com. <laughs> Hear the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show every Saturday morning at 9 and each Sunday morning at 10 on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. WTMA. You're listening to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Welcome back, Charleston, as the real estate discussion continues here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. Again, I'm Brian Beatty. 
Thank you so much for joining. The show airs Saturdays at 9 and Sundays at 10. So if you missed the first half, Sundays at 10, you can catch it. Or you can go online, listingsincharleston.com, and I usually have this show up by Monday of the following week. You can also research your home's value, learn more about my team and what we do to sell about 200 homes a year, about $80 million worth of real estate in the Charleston area. So I invite you to go to listingsincharleston.com, or you can always call me, 843-345-1273, 345-1273. You can text that number too. Uh, If you're interested in talking about working with my team and I to help you buy or sell real estate. So let's talk about something that's just oh so fun, real estate taxes. Woo! (laughs) Okay, let me first help you understand your tax bill, okay? You're going to see a few things up at the top. First, you're going to see is your assessment ratio, which is incredibly important. If you see four, that means that it is an owner-occupied residence. You get a break on your assessment ratio for your owner-occupied home, your primary residence. If you have an investment property or a second home, it's assessed at a 6% assessment ratio, meaning you pay double, actually sometimes triple the real estate taxes for anything other than your primary residence. They give you a break, which is how they view it, for your primary residence. You're also going to see the appraised value, which is their opinion of fair market value for your home based on the last countywide reassessment. You're going to see the total assessment, of course, which is just the appraised value multiplied by the assessment ratio. And then you're going to see millage, People don't really understand what millage is. So the total millage rate is set by Charleston County Council, the the Charleston County School Board, and the area municipality or public service district where that property is located, okay? So the, the ratio is used to determine your individual property tax liability. A mill is always the equivalent of one one thousandth of a dollar, so example, it you know, if the millage rate is 350, then that's $350 if the assessed value is 1000, okay? There's a bunch of really good stuff on Charleston County, Berkeley County, Dorchester County. If you just, you know, do a search for Charleston County taxes, understanding taxes, you'll find all this stuff, but I'm also going to put all of this online because I don't have the ability to read through line by line all of the exemptions that you could find. And I also don't have the time to walk you through every little thing that you need to know if you want to contest the value, if you think your appraised value is too high. But I will tell you that there is a massive opportunity for you to save money if your home is over appraised, okay? So then, you know, toward the middle of the tax bill, you're going to see the distribution of your tax dollars. But let's talk about how to save you some money. That's what you guys really want to know, right? Let's talk about some exemptions. The first one is the homestead exemption. Okay, the homestead tax exemption program are for homeowners that are 65 or older and or totally disabled and or totally blind as of December 31st preceding the tax year of the exemption. So what it does is it exempts the first $50,000 of the value of your house, including up to five continuous acres of property. All right, you have to be a legal resident for at least a year on or before December 31st of the year prior to the exemption. Um, you have to be a- approved for the 4% primary resident assessment ratio. You have to file an application with the county auditor and you have to give some proof of eligibility. You have to have uh, you know, a Medicaid or a Medicare card, birth certificate or driver's license. You know, If you're applying due to age and that certificate has to come from a state or federal agency. Okay. So that's the homestead exemption. There's some massive savings there that some people that are 65 or older don't yet know about that they can be taking advantage of. Again, if your home qualifies as a primary residence, let's say you bought a home last year and then you get your tax bill and it's way more than you thought it was. It's likely because you have not filed for the primary resident assessment ratio of 4%. When a property sells, it automatically goes to 6%. You have to file a form that allows you to inherit those tax savings, okay? So go to the assessor's office, go online and, and figure out how to do that because you're, you're wasting money. Now you can go back and retroactively change that. There's some steps involved. All of that will be online. Now, um, homeowners who, are, you know, who have qualified for that 4% primary uh, residence assessment they're also automatically eligible for state property tax relief, just so you know. So if you're having trouble, you're automatically eligible for property tax relief, okay? So just the assessor's office can help you with that as well. Now, if you were 
a prisoner of war, you're a Medal of Honor recipient or a military veteran who is totally disabled from a service-related cause, you or the surviving spouse of a military person who was, you know, killed in action, you know, if say a, a military person was killed in action, the surviving spouse still gets a tax exemption. You're qualified for exemption from property taxes on a house up to an acre of land on which that house sits, okay? Those applications, by the way, have to be done through uh, South Carolina Department of Revenue. That's not done through the assessor's office. Now, if uh, you're a paraplegic, you're a hemiplegic, a person with Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, a few other things, uh, or a surviving spouse, you are also qualified for some property tax exemptions. So look into that. If you're a former law enforcement officer who was permanently or totally disabled as a result of a law enforcement service, you know, connected disability, you qualify for an exemption. And if you're a former firefighter, including a volunteer firefighter, who's permanently or totally disabled as a result of a firefighting service, you also are eligible for tax savings. Two other things here. If you have agricultural land, if you owned a tract of real estate in Charleston County on January 1st of the current tax year, and it was used to raise, harvest, or store crops, feed, breed, or manage livestock, or to produce plants, trees, fowl, or animals useful to man, which is their description of it, you qualify for a special assessment that will significantly reduce your taxes. No home on that property is required. Okay, that's a big one for all those people that own land that are listening. If it's not, you know, if you have the ability to turn it into agricultural, you're, you're looking at hundreds of dollars a year versus thousands of dollars a year, depending upon the size of your property. And then the last one is a multiple lot discount. If you owned undeveloped acreage that was subdivided into 10 or more unsold lots within a homogenous area and the condition or final plat was recorded at Charleston County, you have the ability to get a discount in your assessment. So there's some savings there. Now, final thing I'll say here, which is, you know, let's say that you get your tax bill and you do not agree with the appraised value of your property, meaning if it, let's say your home is realistically worth 400 and they're appraising it at 450, you're paying them taxes based on the assumption it's worth 450. You have the ability to change their mind by contesting that appraisal. Okay? You also, you know, can change the zoning, you can change a few different things with regard to the classification of your property which will impact the amount of taxes you pay on an annual basis. So, if you want to file an appeal for your appraised value, this is very simply what you need to do. You have to identify the property in question, You know, use a parcel ID number or street address. The letter that you send has to contain an original signature. It cannot just be typed up and sent off to them. You have to sign it with wet ink. And if that signature isn't leg- legible, by the way, then they're not going to accept it. And then the thing you also have to include is a daytime phone number. It is not necessary with this individual, with this initial letter to provide a detailed reasoning for the appeal. However, it would assist the appraiser prior to contacting you about your house. So this is something that right around this time of year, I do for a lot of people. A lot of people contact me and they say, hey, Brian, can you check just to see if the appraised value of my home is consistent with what it's actually worth? I'm happy to do that. It doesn't take me very long. I've I've done tens of thousands of not I can't use the word appraisal because I'm not an appraiser. I've done tens of thousands of CMAs, comparative market analysis for people to help them determine what their home is worth. I am more than happy to help you determine the fair market value for your home to ensure that you're not paying more than you should be for property taxes. I can also look at your bill and see if there are any ways to create some additional exemptions for you, okay? So I'm more than happy to do that for you. All you have to do is give me a call, 843-345-1273. Again, 843-345-1273 or go to my website, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Now, when we come back, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process of selling your home and buying another, the pros and cons associated with that. So stick around for this last segment of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show right here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA. More stimulating talk on real estate matters with Brian Beatty next on 1250 WTMA. WTMA. 
Now, the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues on Charleston's Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, Charleston, to the last few minutes of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. I want to talk for a few minutes about the process of selling a home and buying another. You essentially have two options. You can buy first and then sell, or you can sell first and then buy. So let me walk you through this process. It's a very stressful process for people. This is something that requires a lot of skill on the real estate agent's part. It requires a plan. It requires a lot of what ifs. What if this happens? What if this happens? How do we protect ourselves contractually? So let me walk you through this. If you're going to buy a home first, that means you're going to make an offer on a home with a sale and a settlement contingency, then you're going to list your home for sale. So you're going to make an offer. The seller's going to accept it. That contract is going to be contingent upon your home going under contract and selling. And you're going to agree to all of that before you put your home on the market. Okay? There's a lot that goes into that. We need to strategize that. But that's the essential process if you want to buy first and then sell. You identify the property you want. And then once you get under contract, you put your home on the market. Now, you can purchase that property one of three ways. Personal savings a home equity, home equity line of credit, or a bridge loan. Most people can't afford to pay for two mortgages at the same time, but some can. So some people use a HELOC. A HELOC is a home equity line of credit. It's a loan in which the lender agrees to lend a maximum amount of money within an agreed upon period, which is called a term, by the way, where the collateral is your equity in your home. So they're getting your equity out of the property you own to use it as a down payment for your new purchase. A bridge loan, sometimes called gap financing, is a short-term loan lent by a bank to cover the interval between buying a new house and selling your old one. They can, they can be difficult to find, but they're out there. And then a third option would be you could rent out your current home to cover your mortgage. If you can't find renters who, who are willing to pay more than what you owe on monthly mortgage payments and what it costs to maintain your house, it makes financial sense to potentially rent out your current house and purchase a new one. The downside here is that you'll need to have a down payment saved because you don't get any money out of the equity. But the lender can use that rental income to reduce your debt, thus allowing you to afford more of a property. So what are the pros and the cons of buying first? Well, the pros are you'll have a place to live, which means you don't have to make hasty decisions and, and end up buying a home that you know you don't like or aren't 100% happy with. And the con is that you might feel a little rushed to sell your house. You know, Making an offer with a home sale and settlement contingency makes it less competitive. There's more risk to the seller. The seller's train of thought, of course, is, all right, now, if you're going to make me this offer and I accept it, it's got to be good enough for me to risk being on the market for what could end up being months while you try and sell your home especially if that, mar- if that seller's been on the market for, let's say, five months, they're going to have some trepidation about tying up their property to allow you to sell your house. So when this happens, you have to provide that seller with as much information as possible about what you're going to list it for, what your game plan is for marketing the property. Um, maybe you get an appraisal beforehand and say, look, I know what my home is worth and we're listing it at the appraised value. It should sell fast based on these market stats. And you could also say, look, if my home doesn't sell within 60 days, then you can cancel our agreement. Give me my earnest money back and I'll let you sell to somebody else, okay? So there's a lot of pros, there are some cons, but let's talk about what most people do, which is selling your current home first. You know, you put an offer on a new home with a settlement contingency, not a sale and settlement contingency, a settlement contingency, meaning as soon as you put your home on the market, you start looking at places to buy, but you don't make an offer on anything until you've accepted an offer on your current home. So if you're in this situation, it's important to know exactly what you're looking to buy, which we were talking about earlier. So you make the right choice and then you make a competitive offer that allows you to include that settlement contingency, meaning that if your offer is contingent on your current home selling by a specified date, you don't have to buy it without selling first. So it protects you. Another thing you can do is you can list your property and you can put your home under contract without finding something first by doing something called, called signing a, a rent back agreement. You know, rent back agreement is when the buyer allows the seller to stay in the house for an agreed upon period of time in exchange for rental payments. So if you, know, if you negotiate for this, when you sell your house, 
You can stay in your home while you're searching for a new one or while you're wrapping up the closing on the home that you're under contract with. Okay? Just note that if you want a rent back agreement, it might limit the number of offers that come in on your home because most people that buy something want to move into it. They don't really have the luxury of waiting a month, two, or three. Okay, you can find a temporary rental if somebody makes you an offer good enough. One of the questions I always ask if we're selling and buying is, what would someone have to offer you? And the sellers need to know this number. What would they have to offer you in order for you to be okay with just taking that offer and running to the bank and finding a short-term living situation? Does that number exist or do you just not want to deal with that? Charlie James in the morning. Stimulating talk all day. WTMA.